just paused. Alright, whatever. <laughs> so you might be like a second ahead of me, but uh, she's dropping down the shaft right now. Sweet, I've got the advantage. Alright. <laughs> so basically, I've decided to move away from arm pumping uh, in this video. There's a couple places where I forget, but... Um, I mean, it's not... You know, not a huge thing. You just couldn't help um, yourself, could you? Well, I mean, I, I wanted to show that arm pumping isn't... And yeah, yeah, I couldn't help myself. But it was mostly, like, leaving item rooms. And then I remembered in the next room, oh yeah, I shouldn't have arm pumped. Oh well. It's mostly oh, well. a non-factor. Uh, you can still get a really good series time without arm pumping. I mean, arm pumping really probably saves, like, five seconds over the, the course of a whole run. But I mean, it's an, an easy thing to do when you're just running. So, yeah, early in the game, it's really easy to do arm pumping. Later in the game, it's really complicated and stupid. It's not as important. Yeah. So, but even if you're not arm pumping, what you do want to do is you want to stop in front of the doors. And the easiest way to stop is to just aim down. Aim down. Yeah. Yeah. Aim down. Aim up. It doesn't matter. Get and that's that old button. Also useful for uh, ladder grabbing. Ladder grabbing and ledge grabbing, as you did there. Very nice. Monster. Exactly. Exactly. <clears throat> and um, with the ledge grabbing, what you want to do is, is when you're in the middle of a flip jump, because, I mean, there's no point if you're not in a flip jump, but uh, as soon as you just barely clear the edge of the thing, press your L button. It'll expand your hitbox so you're standing now and lets you jump again faster. Right, it'll basically snap Samus to the ledge so that she can either start running or jump again, depending on where you are. But you're basically mm -hmm. landing sooner with the ledge grab. Exactly. That's always the goal, you want to do everything sooner. <laughs> it only seems complicated until you try it once or twice. Yeah. I'm recording. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so this is the parlor, as we call it. Ah, yes. Uh, it's very. You just want to, you know, you can pretty much do it with just one platform like that. Uh, you can actually do it better than I did it there, but uh, that's a fairly easy way. Yeah, obviously, in this part of the game, is just try to fall without landing, or you're, if landing on as few platforms as possible, because it's going to slow down your speed, your vertical speed. One thing I do want to touch on real quick is uh, the room strats shown here are generally pretty good. Uh, there are faster room strats, but you don't have to follow the room strats. If you can't figure out how to do something, just figure out how you can get through the room the quickest. There's no wrong way to do it. Exactly. Yeah, pretty much every room has at least one solution, if not, or one other solution, if not like three or four others. So just do what feels right for you. One percent. We are on our way. <laughs> we are on our way. Oh, I never started the script. Whoops. That's all right. Don't worry about it. Don't worry all about right. it. If you start it up now, then you'll have to catch up and don't even worry about it. All right. So that was um, that was a mock ball coming out of there. Well, not important to do it there, but that yeah. minor morph is a miniature time saver. Yeah. I think it saves like maybe five frames total or something. I mean, it's it's mm -hmm. ridiculously minuscule. So do it every time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, those are lower tricks on the priority list as far as which ones to learn. Exactly. This is the first room where you might come to it and say, "Oh, how do you do it that way?" But basically, you just want to kill all those guys and get across the room as fast as possible. Exactly. You can damage boost like he did there, but it's, again, not necessary. Right. Damage boosting very, is a very hard, very hard thing to do if you're not used to it. Very advanced tactic, really. Right. And th this shaft is just basically wall climb as fast as you can. Um, when I do the wall climb, I let go of the jump button, so my, my finger only ever has to press one button um, until you start doing the shots up at the top. Yeah, that's definitely going to be a big hurdle for most people who are just starting out mm -hmm. doing that climb that he just did there to get to the bombs. 
But if, you're gonna do, if you you can do single hops up the same way, and it's it'll be just as fine too. Yeah. All right. So the Chozo fight. My personal strategy is I stand. You see that little four vent kind of in the center of the background. It just a little blow it into the right. If you see Samus's foot is right on the crack, like the right edge of the foot is right on the crack, that's the safe spot to start in. <clears throat> and then it's just grab missiles and pop it full of missiles. You don't yeah. want to shoot them too fast uh, because it'll just absorb them during its invincibility time. But um, Space them out like half a second each shot and you'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah, and if you're standing too close to the Chozo, then he won't jump back and shoot out the... You know, if he starts, like, attacking you with his arm, then you know you're standing too close. So that's a sign that you want to move back a little bit when he first starts coming exactly. at you. Now, that midair morph is called the Alcatraz escape, as we like to call it. <laughs> a very tough maneuver. I find it's... It, like, I have to segregate in my mind the actual wall jump from the morph. Mm -hmm. But it's something you have to do very quickly. This is the uh, Terminator strat. Basically, you kill everything in your way until you get down. You only need to have one missile going in as long as you have full health. Uh, because the crabs at the bottom of... Um, or right before the super missile room will give you missiles every time if you have full health. It's all, it's all about percentage of drops. If, you ha if you're missing health, they will drop health more frequently than missiles, and that's not what you're going for if you don't have full. Exactly. Kind of dangerous. So if you're not comfortable with it, just hold on to your missiles. Yeah, you can run straight through those pirates that he was killing with missiles, all the green pirates, and it's this you don't go early power bombs here, right? No. So it's not as crucial to have higher health, so you can do that. You just want to make sure you have five missiles on the way down. Now in this case, if you don't do the quick drop, the wall to the left is bombable. Mm -hmm. So you grab the missile, bomb the wall, get out. Or, if you're not even going to bother with a quick drop, bomb the wall first, then grab the missile, then get out. Yeah, what I do, I actually do that. I drop down in the first crumble block, lay the bomb, roll over to the missile, roll back by the time the wall explodes, and you're good. It's, it's about as fast. Now, he uh, kneeled up into standing position to shoot that block so the bomb wouldn't boost him to the ceiling. Miniature time saver. Also, right. not having to wait for the bomb to go off. Yes, if you're if you're morphed next to a bomb, and they call it the, it will lock Samus basically and, and propel her upward for several frames. So you want to be crouching and shooting. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, if you're in the middle of a morph animation, when the bomb goes off, you will not jump, even if you're yeah. around the whole time. Right, right. That's my typical strat for bombs. And there's the clip. Mm -hmm. nice oh, you do the clip. Nice. Yep. Yeah, I've started incorporating that into my regular runs pretty recently. So, And then there's this uh, kind of tricky mock ball going into Big Pink Room. Yeah, these short hop mock balls, what we call them, are, are what you're seeing a lot of right now. They are, I would say, more of a higher priority trick, or lower priority trick. Lower priority say. trick, because I think each one maybe probably saves 20 frames tops. And, I mean, over the course of the run, it does add up, but there's not that many of them. And um, you can get that missile right now, by the way. Not important. So skip it. There's a slightly better time to get it later. This is the staircase room, by the way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that damage boost off the bug is incredibly hard. To it do. is not as hard as it looks. I mean, you just you, what you have to remember about that is you have to unmorph in front of the pipe so that the thing will come out, and then you can, you know, just boost off of it. Uh, I'd say I get it roughly 50% of the time that the game allows me to get it. Because if that bottom side hopper isn't in a good pattern, you can't get it. <clears throat> uh, this is the atrium up here where he's getting this phaser <laughs> <laughs> these names are very important they are very we important have names for pretty much every room well not in 100% we do. no not in 100% just any percent room so 
And right now this is more or less an 8% up to a point. Yeah, until you get to Krakomiri, it's basically the same as an 80% run. This is the junction here with the two. As soon as I... Because MSDS is telling me names I've never heard before, so... <laughs> but, uh... Eventually, I'll incorporate that into the info script. It'll tell you the name of the room you're in. I may pull out some names on the spot during this. I might, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> I third that demand, Lizzie. I want the detailed map with all the room names. Missiles is faster here than spacer shots or chart spacer shots. Exactly. Yes, and you should have plenty of missiles in a 100% run coming through here, so don't be afraid Most to use death. them. Well, even in any percent, I mean, you, I, I never have less than four missiles going in, and that's if nothing drops. So, yeah. Here comes Craig. Yeah, <laughs> Craig, that's right. <laughs> and you just want to shoot him in the mouth at just the right time. In this case, I did not use the charge beam. But if you use the charge beam, it freezes his hand. So you want to shoot him when his hand is down if you're using the charge beam. Mm -hmm. If you're not right using time. the charge beam, you want to shoot just as it's coming up. So that way it'll be down by the time he gets, you know, by the time his mouth opens. Yeah. So the timing right. with the mouth, like hitting the first super missile in, what helps me is not aiming when it first opens up, but a little bit later than you think. Because every time I do it, I think I'm going to miss it because I missed my opportunity, but it seems like if you just get it right after he opens his mouth, and not just as he is doing it, he'll get it every time. Okay, jump through the door into this room. Very important. Yeah, and, that's uh, huge. Jumping sets the into Kai that Hunters door. up. <clears throat> and these two rooms are called the warehouse, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> two rooms called the warehouse. Interesting. Yeah, I've, I, I made an exception for this area because they both look like warehouses. They yeah, store energy that. tanks and missiles here. I can see and, that. And Guardians. We're, we're going to be revisiting that after Meridia because there's a missile we did not get in this area. And Meridia, I feel, is the best time to go back. Yeah. For sure. I noticed, I, I like to see that you didn't go with the uh, TAS entry to the warehouse where you shoot all three missiles out. Uh, you know, you know, it looked <laughs> fun, but... Uh, you, you'll see a slightly WTF way of getting in after Meridia, so... But it's been done in a real run, so... <laughs> <laughs> Important thing in this room is you want to kill the crawler and shoot the door before you go down here to get the high jump boots. Exactly, because otherwise you'll have to wait on the crawler after you get the boots. And nobody wants to wait. No. Especially not when you're trying for speed. I think that's why you guys didn't like 100% at first, because you're already, like, losing 500 seconds. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, he's coming back now. This, uh, this is Norfear Main Street, also known as the Business Center. Oh no. It's all right. We can we can barely hear it. Don't worry about it. All right. Besides, I kind of like the idea of kind of a drum track to the tutorial. <laughs> so you can just a couple missile shots will kill those uh like they aren't really side hoppers, but they sort of are. They're like upside down side hoppers. Inverted side hoppers. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Dice hoppers. I figured what their names were. I have the instruction book in the they were in there. So you can do a, a small mock ball there, but you're you're bound to get hit anyway, so... Yeah, you're gonna have the mock ball for at most a second. It's like it's... the least important mock ball in the entire game. Definitely. It's your bragging rights, mostly. Yeah. It's like, I got the mock ball, yeah! So... Uh, I like to farm here before the speed booster. I know MSDS likes to farm after doesn't make a huge difference. But um, try and get to five supers right here. It's all about what feels more you're, comfortable. You're about to go, well, you're about to go fight Krokemeyer, and you, you want to use supers on him. 
or at least that was my battle plan. You don't need to use supers on him. Oh, we didn't point out the cathedral. Yeah, I thought about it <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> I never go back to that room. Oh well. It's it's the room that had the lava missile in it. With the inverted side hoppers. Exactly. See, there I am arm pumping. Why am I arm pumping? There's no point. <laughs> Especially with the speed booster, there's no point in arm pumping. Those precious pixels. Exactly. <laughs> It does push you forward a pixel, so, but I, it's just not enough. Doesn't so. justify itself? Yeah, exactly. Oh, that's interesting. A, that, that is an insanely hard damage boost. It is. Most of the time when I try it, I just end right back up on the platform I started on. Yeah, I've never even tried that before. Oh, uh, this is the double chamber, by the way. This is a very difficult room to pull off quickly. Arm pumping at 30 it, hertz. Yeah, no. <laughs> okay. So we got right wave. after this is go straight to Crocomire. You can get the missile under Bubble Mountain, as we've called it. Um, but it's uh, you know, I, I feel it's like it's better your, to get it later. It's on your route in three more times right when you come back in here. I forget, the, and you can pick him up any time. Yeah. Just don't forget to pick them up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> there are three possible visits to that room, so you can get them whenever. And in fact, if you get them before going to Crocomire right here, you can clear out this tunnel way while you're you know, while you're going down to the missile. Oh nice turnaround to exploit the uh damage booth or yeah, the Yeah, there so there's two ways to Kago. So you can either morph or you can turn, and you know, either will work for enemies. But when you're falling down like that, the turn one is faster. And when we say Kago, that means you're basically clipping through an enemy or a platform, which is usually an enemy or some of some sort. That's right. So this is Krokomire. My strategy here is just to missile super as fast as I can. When I run out of supers, it's just missile missile, uh, and it pushes them back quite a bit. <clears throat> This if was actually a lucky fight. If uh, you find it's difficult to do the oh. missile and then super, then just stick to doing one super at a time until you run out of supers. Exactly. Exactly. If you think you can do it, you can try and put the charge beam in his face, but that's kind of unreliable. <laughs> See, and, nice. and I thought he was going to, like, shoot at that point. I was surprised yeah. he didn't shoot at all. Honestly. That was interesting. He was like, it looked like he was dead, but then he was about to start shooting, and then he just died. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, just just get too. <laughs> so yeah, get this energy tank right here um, while you're waiting for him to die. It's like no time because you have to wait for that for his skin to fall off anyway. Right. But um, but yeah, if he does shoot at you, just jump up and shoot a missile in his mouth, and that'll uh, shut him up real quick. But he's not dead yet. Oh wait, yes he did. If, you, if your route doesn't uh, rely on... Yeah, you're, you're actually slightly ahead, MSDS. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> but, um... No spoilers. If, if your route... Now, there are some routes that don't get the grapple beam at this point. Um, but we'll save that for a different time. <clears throat> Early power bombs. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Te technically, these is, this is still early, I believe. Yep, you, you're technically you're supposed to have the grapple the beam and swing to the thing, but I mean, uh, that jump right there, you don't even have to kill the guys out of the pit if you noticed, um, because there are guys that spawn out of that pit. If you just jump right before the pit, like I mean, like pretty much on top of it, then you can jump up there pretty easy. Uh, if you don't think you can make it, you can uh, jump and you know you can shoot them aim down and shoot before you jump and you'll kill him and you'll make it anyway. Right. This missile here you can shine spark too if you're not good at the super jump. You just need to jump out a tiny bit and then shine spark straight up. Uh, which is just do a flipping jump and then while you're holding jump hit up. Uh, uh, I'm jealous. You made, you made the speed uh, Sorry, I was just going to say, if you don't understand why you got so much height with that jump, if you have the speed booster and high jump boots and you jump on a upward slope, 
you will have a significant increase in your vertical height. Oh, well, it's not even and jumping that's... on a vertical slope. I mean, uh, most of my su- uh, super jumps, as, as we call them, most of my right. super jumps are done on a flat surface. There just happens to be a vertical slope nearby that looks like, you know, it help you. Oh, okay. I thought it was... It's, it's just if you're going fast enough. You can huh. also build up a Shine Spark here and Shine Spark to this missile. It's just faster to do the damage boost. So uh, Shine Sparks actually take a little bit of time that you don't think about when you crash into the wall. There's like a two-second delay before you get to do anything. So maybe one and a half seconds. In that so, case, though, it's definitely faster than wall jumping oh yeah, up definitely, that wall. Oh, yeah, definitely. So going vertically in any capacity... Or if you're going horizontally for more than two screens, it's typically when it's worth it to Shine Spark. Dropping some knowledge. <laughs> That's the point of the tutorial. <laughs> so these are kind of some tricky jumps you're doing right here. I don't know. Obviously, I, uh, they're just simple wall jumps. I mean. That's that's all it is. Jump, jump. I mean, I'm just trying to get up to the top as quickly as possible. Right. But to the untrained eye, they may look a little easier than they actually are, but they're still not that difficult. Right. So here we go to get the ice beam. Um, uh, best way to get across. Once again, I mean, Shine Spark. It's a two-screen room, but it is faster to do a speed ball right there. It just happens to be clear enough that you can do... Uh, basically, you're carrying your full speed boost speed across. Mm-hmm. Via if the morph ball. Do the, if you can do the speed ball, go for that instead. But if you can't, Shine Spark is definitely what you want. Right. Yeah, yeah Shine Spark is the next speed. best strategy. Shine, Shine Spark, you lose maybe like 10 frames over the speed ball or something like that. It's it's not major at all. And like as far as health goes, and it's way yeah, more consistent. That's another reason why the speed ball is a little bit more. All right, let's talk about that mock ball real quick because I know we all have different ways of doing it. I only shoot the one guy on the left, but it's possible to do it with the left or the right. Car seats in the car. Remember, I bought you one. Uh, I would recommend doing it with both elevators, one. basically Remember? to extend, get as much platform length as possible to get enough running exactly. speed. Exactly, exactly. And when you do that, you want to do the shortest Daddy hop Daddy that you can and do a mock ball. Yeah, that's healthy, probably, I'd probably say the second or third most important mock ball in the game. Oh my yeah, it's not a I love you. Okay. So that shine spark, uh, I used to just do it from the standing position right where the cactus was. You just shoot, wait a bit, and then spark. Uh, but, you know, after watching MSDS and Garrison, uh, the jump makes sense because when you do the jumping shine spark, uh, you can actually go into the door without landing. So mm-hmm. that's the major bonus there. Also, it's slightly faster just in the room where you start the shine spark. I also want to stress the importance of getting that refill at the bottom of the shaft before continuing. That is very, very important. Exactly, exactly. You will need a lot of health for the next part. It's probably one of the more difficult parts. Yeah, the more health you have, the better. And you do, uh, since I was out of super missiles when I entered this room, and I suspect you will too. Um, farm the cactuses. Uh, yeah, farm okay. the cactuses. So, I mean, you just need to do, you know, one going in, enter the safe room, get the ones going out. Now you have three. When you get these power bombs, then you um, get the other two going out. And since you already have power bombs here, you can drop a power bomb before you get to that power bomb, and then the wall's already blown up by the time you get to it. That was pretty slick. Nice. That was one of the strategies I came up with the other day on my own. But I didn't ha- think about applying it to this setting, which is really cool. If you can't do that, what he just did there on the way into the power bombs, then just try to damage boost what he did on the way out of there, basically. Exactly. Where just, if you don't morph at all, you just try to do a damage boost off of the yellow things as they jump up into you. And that way you'll avoid the spikes and the non-flowers. Alright, so this is, uh, this is the side hopper room. And what I'm doing there is I'm morphing and unmorphing, so I fall more slowly, so as to kill the side hoppers with the one power bomb. Uh, I find the m- the longer you keep them on screen, the more damage they take. When they go off screen, the game isn't thinking about them anymore, and they're still alive, even though they're technically still in the explosion. Yeah. And they should have died, but they didn't. Exactly. Right. Exactly. 
And each time you lay a power bomb, there's two possible hits that you can that each enemy can take from each power bomb, and it depends on their proximity to the center of the power bomb explosion. Now let me let me talk about why I laid the power bomb at the top of that room instead of at the bottom. Uh, I don't know if you realize this, but uh, especially with the vertical, uh, the shape of the power bomb explosion, Sonic jumps faster than the explosion travels. So I found it's actually faster to lay the power bomb up at the top of the room. Because especially with the high jump boots, you jump up so fast. Um, yeah, I always wondered why more people didn't do that. I did that for a long time. And you, you'll see it a few other places. The power bomb explosion actually travels very slowly. So, I mean, unless you're doing some, you know, unless you're doing something in the middle of where you drop the power bomb and the explosion, you you probably want to drop it as close to what you're blowing up. As possible. So we kind of glossed over the whole getting into the wreck ship part, but I think <laughs> most people, I think it's pretty infamous to, enough to that most people know how to, at least how their shine sparks work, and at the very least, you have the grapple beam in this route, so you don't exactly. even really have to do that. Exactly. Um, now that was, uh, getting into the wreck ship was a, a short charge. It wasn't a super short charge. All I did was I walked for a few steps, like really, um, since I started in the, in the moat room, started on the far left platform, open the door, walk through the door, and then start holding run in the transition, and then you're able to charge up the shine spark. <clears throat> yeah, it's really forgiving time, so... And as long as you press down before you hit the water, you will have the shine spark. And <clears throat> exactly, exactly. And here's everybody's favorite boss. <laughs> so I don't use the X-Factor in this fight. I, I go for the, the simple version, which is just shoot 12 shots at him with this beam. And the configuration for this beam is just wave, spacer, charge. That's all it is. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, is... doing it this way, you take a lot of damage. So it's it's very hard to avoid all that damage, especially if you're trying to complete it as fast as possible. Yeah, but this is definitely a good way to start out with Fantoon because when you're trying to go to the pause menu and you're trying to dodge everything, it really makes it more complicated. This gives you a better feel for the fight just starting out as far as his patterns and how random he is because he is really random <laughs> basically just want to watch when he slows down when he slows down you want to be aware that he's either going to keep going or shoot his flames out so what I always do is when I see him slow down I immediately spin jump that way I can be ready to shoot him right Right, and you want to be spin jumping when he opens those flames so you don't take damage from the flames now hopefully yeah now if you, you notice I didn't really do anything in any of that in that fight. Right. No, it's not super important, but you will save a little bit of health. And if you're newer to the game, you're probably going to take more hits than Desi just did. So you go to the right here first because it'll let you carry your momentum going to the left into the other room. You'll see it in a bit. Uh, Balance Maker, the end time for this recording is very competitive with my best... Um, like TAS sort of thing that I've done like this. It's it's an incredibly competitive time, so this route really isn't much worse than uh, the route that I currently use. I'm going to say that the difference is about 30 seconds, but... Um, so you drop the power bomb there, and then run across. And you can just jump straight to it. Um, but, I mean, I mean, the different routes... It's, it's more about execution, so it's more about how good the player actually is as, as to who wins a 100% race than the route they choose, for the most part. You notice right here I don't even go for the energy tank. Um, I wait until after I get gravity because it's easier and much less riskier that way. Yeah, mm -hmm. for me personally, the energy tank, which you'll see him get here shortly, that it was one of the... It is the hardest, the hardest part of my personal route. So you want to clear out this room, shoot that left door, and then go back to the right to get the missile. Yeah, I cannot stress shooting that left door before you go all the way across enough, because otherwise you will have to kill all those enemies again coming back through the room. Exactly. 
Oh, nice. <laughs> nice, uh... <laughs> Yeah, so that's not even a Kago right there. You're basically exploiting the robot's AI, right? Because it's walking towards you? Or um, I... Yeah, yeah, I think it's roughly similar to the Zebatite glitch. Um, you basically, you take a it. hit, and then you can move through it. And the reason why you can move through him is because he's kind of like lunging forward at you. It's weird. So I mean, I didn't know it was... That. I didn't know you could actually do it quite like that. I learned something. And the reason why I shot missiles at the third guy is because um, every time I tried it, the third guy stopped and shot at me, so it was just faster to do it that way. Now, if you can't do the super jump here, you can shine spark from one of two places. You can shine spark from below the missile, or you can do the island that I jumped under, the last island that I was under before I jumped, and then sh uh, do a diagonal shine spark from there. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that jump is very difficult. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I would Shine spark might be of course, the it saves at least a second if you get the jump the first time. Yeah. So that's one of the cases where the jump is actually quite a bit faster. So oh, Grapple Beam will kill everything in here in one hit. Uh, and just about everything in Meridia in one hit. You can build a Shine Spark here, but it requires super short charging, so uh, there's no super short charging in this run. Also, I would not recommend if you're first starting it out to try even try damage boosting in that pit right there because if you screw it up, you will lose a lot of health and possibly die. Exactly. You can still do it just taking two hits without doing any damage boosting. Yeah, just take the damage and run. Damage boosting is, for me anyways, it's a liability. It, it really is. I mean, unless you can really control your damage boosts. Um, like if you do the, the high damage boost instead of the low damage boost um, that'll you know that'll reduce your speed right and that also make sure you have at least one power bomb when you're coming into this area you pro you obviously using, want using this route you, you're very high up on power bombs um, in my personal route I like to make sure I have six power bombs before I go to this area and that takes care of all the power bombs going up to the next power bomb pickup. That's not for a while, if I'm not mistaken. Um, that's too far so, away. So we're going to finish up the wrecked ship here, and then we're going to go do the gauntlet. Uh, uh. But the way this route is laid out, it actually picks up quite a few more power bombs anyway. Or I guess just the one other power bomb before going here. So it doesn't have a problem with that. The lounge... Yeah, the bowling room should be called the lounge. Is that what you're talking about, Tranquilite? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. I like, I, don't it. Know. I like it, too. That's a good room. That's a good name, I mean, yeah. I mean, the bowling like the alley, alley also makes sense, thing. but... Oh, the alley, yeah, that does yeah. make more sense. <laughs> so we gotta go back and get that energy tank. What's up? Don't know. Alright, so I had to jump through the door because the treadmill actually pushes you further. You'd bump into the door if you didn't jump. And then you can actually just do a regular, um... Oh my god. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> What's up? That's an interesting okay, way to get through there. If you're wondering what just happened there, that was very advanced. Okay, so so what I did there is uh, I did a speedball through that room. You can just jump through it normally. Um, uh, you yeah. can also do a damage boost off the spikes, which you'll see on my way out. Uh, I thought, yeah. Okay. No, go ahead. <laughs> real, real quick in this room, I found it's quicker to just skip the platforms since you already have the gravity suit. Yeah, yeah. The spikes honestly don't do enough damage that you should worry about them. And you notice it did four damage to me right there. Um. But anyway, about about that other room. Get fucking mouse. Yeah, this this room right here. Don't take Control this room delete. very lightly. You must what? be very Control careful. Control delete. Even with the gravity suit. Because click that. it's just very dangerous. Right, you should be able to click things now. The spikes mm -hmm. really, really hurt when the power's finally back on. When they yeah. do, was, what is it, 20 or 30 damage per hit? Something like that? Yeah, yeah. and the platforms themselves will take up a full tank. And that that's if you don't have the gravity suit, which is why, yeah. which is yeah, why I want to get the gravity suit first and then get the E-tank. It really doesn't save that much time to get the energy tank before the gravity suit. It saves backtracking, which is... <laughs> uh, which is it's, which is a bit of real time, yeah. 
the door transitions, I think, are the biggest. Negligible when you're first starting out, I'd say. Mm -hmm. Go yeah, with yeah. the safe strats. Yeah. And obviously with that mole missile, if you missed it going into the wrecked ship, you can get it on your way back out. It's no big deal. Yeah. Yeah. But you're not going to come back there again, so you make sure to get it on your way out if you missed it the first time. So we're going to go ahead and clear out the gauntlet real quick here. So uh, first first part of that is actually the power bomb to the right of the gauntlet. This isn't technically the gauntlet. Um, this is the loft. The loft. the pocket. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and the gauntlet is actually a name from uh, way back when. Um, it's a canon name. Now, there is a wraparound glitch you can do with the spacer, but the fastest way really just a speedball across yeah and make sure if you if you're confused about how you do that you can go back and watch the inputs but you basically want to be holding jump and oh i'm not even sure i think it's just jump and then you just and need to power bomb your way and i'm dropping here uh the power bombs basically the earliest earliest possible moment to get rid of the farthest across pillar that i can get to so. was that just two power bombs you made it through there three Oh, three. You can't okay. do it with just two. Okay, I didn't think so. But the first one was really early. So instead of opting for a 2-2-2 two, two, two pillar destruction, I went for 1-2-3. And then this one you can drop really early. Oh, wow. Yeah. This is the most dangerous part of the gauntlet with, with item acquisition. Yeah, really especially is. now. Because if you don't have the spring ball, you can you can basically miss the opportunity to get both missiles. Right, you, you gotta have be to really fall. fast with your jumps if you mess it up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you're not sure where to stand, you want to be on the very middle of those crumbling blocks. Right. Yeah. Right. Basically, there's two columns of two by two, uh, whatever uh, what are they call crumble blocks. You want to stand on right in the middle of both of them, so you can go down in one shot. Drop a PB in between the bombs. Now, PBs have um, this thing called lag that actually slows down your real time. Mm -hmm. Now, it'll be faster in-game time, sure, but uh, in a race, you only care about real time. So you want to minimize PB usage where it's unnecessary. <clears throat> now you're going down to the basement. To the basement, all right. We're going to the basement. Okay. The cellar. How many basements are there? <laughs> uh, this is the first one I've come up with. I don't know if anybody else has. Uh, yeah. If for whatever reason you're low on power bombs, you can just kill all four of those uh, frog flea guys. And, and if you don't have any power bombs, when you get to that floor that requires power bombs, there's a door on the left that has some of those light bugs that drop power bombs at an alarmingly high rate. Yeah, there are certain enemies in this game that will drop them uh, pretty consistently. The frogs that are attached to him right now are one of them, and then those light bugs are another. There's a few more as well. Mm -hmm. The caterpillar is just before the uh, power bomb room in Red Brinster is another one of those enemies. And the crabs. And the crabs. Crabs, crabs. don't quite drop them as high as some of the other creatures, but um, they do drop them at a high rate. I'd say it's probably yep. about half. If you can, do a mock ball there, it'll save you a fall. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you exactly. don't mock ball right there, you won't have enough speed and you will fall back down the shaft to whatever quarter of the way. It's, it's a floor. tough mock ball because the space is so small and the height is so weird. But, um, yeah. So, coming up is another use for the grapple beam. Actually faster than the shine spark. Nice. <clears throat> I can believe it. Very nice. So, are you getting? How, are you using your method to get these four supers right here? Yes. Coming up. That's okay. Right. I'll let you explain that. <laughs> it's a good method. Okay. So yeah, it's a great um, method. Yeah, it's coming up real quick. Uh, but basically, what you do is first off, you want to clear away the blocks in front of the super missile block. And then you stand right where um, is is very hard to see right there. But if you go back and, and you'll see me stand there for just a second, 
Uh, I like to line up her visor, those two, you know, green pixels, basically, uh, with the center of that tallest, thick stalk of uh, flower there. And as long as you've started with the screen at the farthest left, move over there and you don't have to, like, backtrack or anything, you should make the shot without a problem. <clears throat> there is actually another way to get in there, but it requires insane mem uh, health management because you have to do a crystal flash. Right. right. And ba basically, in order to do that, is you take off your suits as soon as you're done with wreck ship, or uh, I guess in this case, uh, as soon as you're done with the gauntlet. And you want to take damage from the side hoppers in the room above the power bomb before that, uh, before the um, where you would do the crystal flash, because those side hoppers, if you take off all your suits, do like 80 damage a hit or something like that. They're strong. Uh, yeah. Also, they're very on, the, strong. on the way. The way out of getting that energy tank, before you get the E-tank, you want to kill all those side hoppers and open the gray door that you just entered. That way, you can exit it quickly as he did there. Mm -hmm. Ideally with the damage boost, but it's a hard damage boost to get. Very hard. And this route gives you a whole stockpile of energy tanks for Batoon, Dragon, and Ridley. Mm -hmm. So you, you should not have any problems fighting those three particular monsters. Yeah, I think you guys will enjoy the bot food fight. <laughs> and so, so this, what we're doing right now, is basically called cleanup. You're going back through all these areas with your newfound power-ups to get all the pickups that... Basically, it's missed. faster to get with the new power-ups. Exactly. So that pipe right there, it's faster to get in that pipe with the high jump boots because you can do a mock ball as I just did there. Um, as opposed to without the high jump, you have to basically wall jump up there. Uh, you can technically get in the pipe with without the high jump boots um, and still do a mock ball, but it's like TAS only almost. It is. Definitely. So now that we have the gravity suit, we can just ignore the water in this room. But, um... Obviously, I jumped over it anyway. A lot of these damage boosts, by the way, are not very critical. Like, they, you know, they're fun, but you're not... I wouldn't go, you know, getting all discouraged if you can't get a lot of these damage boosts, because exactly. they are not critical. Exactly. And, uh... Um, the trick for that jump there... Second. Uh, yeah. If you're not trying to do the spin jump, is let go of all of your buttons after you drop the power bomb. Make sure you're standing. Let go of all of your buttons, and then um, uh, what is it you want to do? Uh, as soon as you see the missile like start to crack, hold jump. Like you can't even hold run because run will advance it, but it'll pause if you're not holding anything. Kind of like an item box. And those were the main street missiles that he just collected there. Exactly. Yes, and that, I don't know, that one is kind of tricky because if you can't do a short charge, then you're going to have to do a different method to get those. Exactly, and that's just a regular short charge that I did there. So that's the same thing as going to the wreck ship. You walk for like half a second and then hold run. This is the Mama Turtle room. Mm -hmm. Mama gets very angry when you disturb her children. <laughs> you disturb the Ninja Turtles. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and this is the fish tank here, by the way. Yeah. That fish will become the bane of your existence. Yeah, those Most fish likely, will yes. get in your way. So, I used to drop a power bomb here, and then I found out power bomb lag really kills your real time here, so you don't want to drop power bombs. It's just not worth it. Just take the damage. Mm-hmm. Very nice. I mean, you just got an E-tank. You're good on energy. So... Any uh, percent is a little dicier, but... Yeah. That was a pretty simple... Uh, that was the auditorium, by the way, and that was just a simple diagonal shine spark that you want to do in the second cap there. Yeah. <clears throat> 
You can. You don't even have to jump. You can just do it straight from the ground. It's exactly. by far the fastest way up that room. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this is the beach. Personally, for me, this room is really awkward without the spring ball because I'm so used to having it here, especially in my older days. Yep. Some people may have the spring ball here by taking going around the backwards way into Meridia. So I was kind of confused about downbacks here. I wanted to like do some downbacks. Obviously, I did some earlier in the run, and then I forgot about it at this point. And I was thinking, oh, I'm not trying to do downbacks in this, but um, <laughs> you can you can just gap skip over those if you press down right as you go into the gap. Right, so you and don't have to jump. Downbacking, in my opinion, is a pretty advanced strategy as well. Not something I would be too worried about if you're just starting out. Exactly. It's very advanced. Well, once again, grapple beam kills everything in Meridian in one hit, except for Botwin and Dragon, of course. And the uh, fishes. And the mock droids, I think. And no, it the kills the mock droids. It'll, 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 it'll kill the crabs, too, but I found killing the crab going down right there actually stopped me in the air as soon as I shot him. So, oh well. That's why, that's why I didn't do it. This is the aqueduct here. We'll be back there later. Mm-hmm. Those are mock droids. They are your friends. Yes, they are handy for power for getting drops. Although in 100, percent it's not as important. So I'm not doing the X factor here, by the way. Uh, you can actually kill um, Batuun very quickly with just supers. Just stay up in his face. You're aiming for his head. Yeah, wow. that is a good strategy there. <laughs> It's going to be difficult at first, but yeah, you basically want to be like inside of his hitbox because you can. He's got a very small hitbox. I should say inside of his body. So here you can build up a charge and do a shine spark, go across this room. Uh, it's easier to do the half than the full um, by like an order of magnitude. But if you yeah. don't even do that, you can just wall jump up and then just kind of, just kind of try and get across as fast as you can. You know, wall jump over the obstacles. It's a crappy room, but... Um, this is the Coliseum, by the way. Yeah. If you don't get that damage boost, you know, you can just wall jump from, from lower on there. Don't forget these missiles. And, uh, yeah, don't forget these missiles. <laughs> I like to get them before Dragon because I like to go for the blue suit. Now, in this case, there are no short, super shorts, so there's no blue suit in this run. Uh, it's done entirely with missiles. Um... But actually, after I created this, I decided that grappling probably would have been the better strat to do. Uh, if you don't know, you uh, wait for, for uh, Dragon to pick you up, and then you shoot the grapple beam at one of the top little electric things on the wall, and that'll bring him down. The reason why I think it's faster is because you don't have to farm for supers. Ah. Uh. So. Also, a lot easier as well. Yeah, it's significantly easier. Um, so in this case, I just missile him to death. Once again, just try and stay in his hitbox and shoot missiles at him as fast as you can. And um, he'll go down. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your fight's probably not going to be that fast. But... Probably not. It's much easier to do that if he does a few more rounds before he goes into a goo phase because you get a little more time to get regular hits on him. Um, that one was very hard for me to do. Would the lag of a power bomb help take on Dragon? It probably would increase your uh, uh, reflexes. Um, and a lot of people like to shoot off the power bomb to get rid of all the goo. Just make sure that when you drop the power bomb, that you don't get hit by the goo. Because if you're hit by the goo and you manage to clear it off yourself somehow, like with a power bomb or with a, a pseudo screw attack or uh, building up a speed, then Dragon will instantly retreat. Yep. Don't learn that the hard way. <laughs> exactly. Uh, going back through the Coliseum there is pretty simple, but the, those space jumps are a little tricky to time, but you basically want to make sure you're not hitting the ceiling or hitting a platform, otherwise you're going to fall, or running into a wall, I should say, or the, and you're going to have to fall all the way down and jump back up, which wastes a lot of time. Right. Now, in this case, I did not need to drop a power bomb here, but it's good for clearing out the little, the little red goo things. I guess we'll call them red chews, like from Zelda. Uh, <laughs> okay. 
Yeah, the red <laughs> shoes. It's it's good for clearing them out and make it easier for you to fall down without taking any damage. So don't forget this missile super missile combo. Yeah. Very easy to forget. Yeah. Yeah, and you are going to be coming into this room one more time as well, so if you happen to forget it this time, you can always get it on the final time. Exactly. Same thing with that energy tank um, that we had just gotten. Yeah, I would recommend getting that at the first time possible, just in case you happen to accidentally quick drop trying to get it the first time. Uh, I, I don't like to do it the first time possible because that time you're going on the way to Dragon... It's just faster. Oh, I'm just sorry. I'm across. sorry. I meant second time. Yeah, sorry. second time. Yeah. First time after Dragon is what I meant. Right. Right. You can shoot that. It's very easy to mid mid air morph into that. Yeah, it's not that hard. Um, when you're underwater, your space jump has different properties. You can jump a lot faster than you can normally, so... Right. So here you just tag the grapple block, and then you can just wait for it to disappear. If you're worried about these little bug dudes hitting you, you can drop a power bomb when you get close to the top and clear them out, and that will give you free space to get back up. Wow, Leno, something happened with your sound. <laughs> <laughs> also, the grapple beam will kill those guys in one shot as well. Yeah, but it's likely going to stop all your momentum and you may fall all the way back down. So I find this is a good time to turn off your ice beam. This guy is the best critter in the game. Mm -hmm. My Very personal helpful. favorite. Yeah. He's the coffee break critter. Exactly. He teaches you that patience is a virtue. <laughs> I like how we've been now been joined by Robo Lenifus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's Come back. on, say, say harder, better, faster, stronger. <laughs> I'm not talking. To, I'm not talking to you. <laughs> this guy sounds like a robot on Skype. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> there we oh, go. Regular Leno up. has defeated the mighty robot. <laughs> so, so right there, I uh, I unfurled myself out of the morph ball, morph ball as soon as I fell and shot the door, so I wouldn't have to shoot it on the way back. It's not a major thing, but um, nice strategy. You also want to unfurl so that when you land, if you go into a morph ball right when you land, you don't bounce. Yeah, you'll see him doing that a lot, and that's just something that you'll just eventually you'll play it enough, and you'll just be like, hey, I can do that instead of bouncing every time I hit the ground. So Not those green shoes giving you damage kind of helps helps you get over to that ledge. These rooms are very tricky. The ones with the sand waterfalls or sand falls or whatever because it drastically changes the physics of Samus. So you want to try to keep just run into the room and space jump continuously across the room because if you do get stopped, you'll find it's very difficult to move in those rooms. And it's it very really likely is. you will get stopped somehow. <laughs> Yeah, you can get stuck very easily. Yeah, you can definitely get stopped very easily, so just try your best to not get frustrated in those rooms, because if you do get stopped, it's pretty difficult to move. And that's one of the key points of this route, is to avoid those two rooms as much as possible. <laughs> not really a key point, but it, it's a big time saver if you can avoid them. Yeah. It's the most important part of the run. <laughs> now, the reason why I shot a missile at that door right there is because my normal shot would have been absorbed by those eggs. And oh. I had just equipped the missile... Okay, so I equipped the missile so I can one-shot the little flapjacks that, like, pop up and then they do the thing down. Um, and I just left the missiles on because uh, you have a ton of missiles at this point. When you get to that room with the stack of eggs, the missile goes right over them, whereas your normal shot would get absorbed by them. Pretty sure those are just the chews that are just in, like, the... No, they don't move. Position. They don't move. Well, oh, well, I meant... Like, they aren't, they aren't like, white chews or anything like that. They're just... <laughs> I, I think they're eggs. That's okay, why I well, think of them. They just chill out? Yeah. I always just thought they were twos who never jumped. I thought they were like baby space pirates or something. <laughs> it's the incubator. It's the name of that room. 
This is cac. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. This is Cactus Alley, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Good place to get supers. Yeah. yeah. So get every super you can from here on out. Um, you, will, you will need them. Mm -hmm. Best strat for Ridley is 30 supers, so uh, that's what we want to use. The charge beam technically does more damage, but is slower. It does, yeah, it does more damage. It shoots way slower. Um, yeah. So if you do a short charge there, instead of just doing a straight run, you can build up your blue before the first sand pit and just run right over it. Otherwise, yeah, you, you can just do running space run. Right. Otherwise, if you you cannot run over that though, unless you have the blue suit, if I if I remember correctly. That's right. Yep. That's right. Even if you do like a super short charge that like you're running and barely over walking speed, as long as you're blue, you can walk over it. Right. So this is obviously the tail end of Meridia clean up here. That was Meridia actually the last item out. in Meridia right there. My personal least favorite favorite part of the game, but it's not that bad. Yeah. Could be And here's worse. here's what we're talking about with the sand waterfalls or the sand falls. You see how slow he was going right there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that will happen to you, so just don't get discouraged and just try to get through the best you can. If you get stuck, then you can try and do better the next time. It's not a big deal. Yeah. So here's the, uh, we go back to Crade here because we're already headed to the right, so we may as well keep going into Crade's thing. Yes, and this is the reason why you'll see people get power bombs early, because of this one pickup right here is pretty much the main reason why people get power bombs early. Well, I would say there, there are a few other um, shortcuts that you can do with the power bombs that kind of help balance it out. They're just not as important. As if far as if you go for goes. power bombs early, you pretty much have to execute it flawlessly for it to save time. Yeah, yeah. And that is actually pretty hard to do. That's right, balance maker. This is the warehouse. Yes, this is the warehouse. <laughs> <laughs> there's anything you should pick up from the tutorials that that is the warehouse. Yeah. <laughs> Most so, important thing. So the mock ball coming out the second time is a lot easier because you can just jump way before the edge of the platform. I don't know if right. you notice how early I jumped there, but and that the mock ball that you saw on the way into that room is not very crucial either. Very no. probably difficult to pull off. Very, very much so. Yeah. So this is why I dropped the power bomb right there instead of dropping it ASAP, is because that explosion travels a lot slower than you do when you're running that fast. Right. So you bring the power bomb to the blocks instead of let the explosion go there. At a ridiculously slow pace. Um, be careful with that missile that he just picked up there. You want to definitely shine spark into it. That's going to ensure that you're not going to fall back down that. You that can do it there. faster without shine sparking. Shine sparking is by far the easiest way. Yeah, it's if you fall down that shaft, it's very difficult to get back up because there's so much crap in the room. Right. And all those, those all platforms, the platforms are crumple blocks too. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's, it's probably that's my what least, makes it favorite, so hard. least favorite power up in the game. Now, fortunately, you do have the space jump here, so if you fall down, it's not that hard to get back up. So, um, yeah, the trick he did to get across that spike room was to keep his speed going, but... So, so you build up your speed beforehand, and then you. Um, what I do is, for that first shot, I release my charge beam as soon as I get to that long block of blocks uh, right before that door. And then in the second room, I charge up my charge beam as I'm building up my speed and let go of it in the transition then I do the jump, and you can carry your momentum that way. Uh, and this right here is just a simple short charge. That's all it is. So you build up your short charge, and then you jump at the last possible moment, and you can just go right through those flames. That's uh, Wall Street, by the way. And, and, <laughs> and if you shoot the door right, you can spring ball into the next room and drop a power bomb up at the peak of your jump. Very difficult. Another very, very difficult, difficult trip. I, I get not it. one that's necessary. No, nope. Definitely not. Saves a second, probably. Now these missiles are tricky because if you fall down, you have to go all the way back around just to try form again. So make yep. sure you get them on your first try. <laughs> exactly. Now, now what I did there is is if you can actually just jump 
at just do one jump. You don't even have to space jump. Um, usually, I just use the spring ball because yeah. If you're not comfortable with those jumps, if you get into the spring ball and hold jump, it doesn't matter what crumble block you go to. You will continuously jump every time you hit the crumble block, and you will not fall down. So that's a very safe way to get across that. You can just morph, hold jump, and go across, and you will just jump across to the missile. I actually feel like that was a pretty slow Chozo fight because you can actually shoot your charge beam a little faster than that, but that's the strategy. You shoot him, and then you back him into the corner, and then shoot him until he dies. Yeah, and if you shoot him right as he's jumping, your charge beam will actually hit him twice, which is what he was doing there. Um, you kind of, It's kind of a timing thing, so don't worry too, too actually, much. Actually... As long as you shoot him while he's not falling down, you'll get two hits on him. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Maybe it's not as hard as I thought then. Yeah. Super it just missiles. looked like I was timing because I was doing it so slow. So here we're farming up to uh, greater than 30 super missiles because that's the tech, the tactic we're going to use on the boss. And it's yeah. you know, it's, it's alright to sit here and farm here real quick because you get a lot of super f missiles really fast and it really does save time on the boss. Yeah, and those guys will guarantee to drop super missiles if you need them. Mm -hmm. So, and I think it's a ninety. I think it's actually a ninety-nine percent chance of super missile drops from those guys. Right. Yeah. If you don't get the shine spark right here, you can just screw attack through those pillars. Yeah, it's marginally faster to do a shine spark right there, but because you have screw attack, that makes I, I it. I think if you have enough speed, it's faster to just screw attack. But it's it's hard to build up that speed and you know still go through the the door previous, you know? Right. Be careful getting these missiles right here, the Mickey Mouse missiles. There uh, are crumble blocks on that second layer of um, pipe. Piping. Yeah. And yeah, if, right if you there. fall down, you will be stuck having to kill everything in the room. Mm -hmm. And you it's have to go around. another forced loop. So uh, pretty much a lot of items in Inner Warfare, you have to do loops if you miss them the first time. Balance Maker, yeah. that is not the heart room. That is the Mickey Mouse room. I call it the heart room, but uh, it's the Mickey Mouse room. There's nothing to love about it, so it's not the heart room. <laughs> oh, that room we should talk about real quick, the amphitheater, is... He did space jumps to kind of skip a lot of that room, but... This is almost the exact amount of time to just fall all the way down and space jump from the floor. It's just... Yeah, and, you don't have and to deal with any BS. You don't have to deal with any BS if you just... If you're able to, you know, jump around the stalactite... Right, and it's basically a timing thing. If you want to jump up on, under that thing, you can do it, but if you're not comfortable with that, just fall all the way down and jump straight up. Well, not straight so, up. So one thing I did there is you can shoot an enemy as you're running through it and not take damage. Uh, with the plasma beam, you actually get, I think, a couple of shots in, so it gives you a longer invincibility time, which is why you haven't seen it used yet until you know after the plasma beam. And because those spike platforms are sprites, you can uh, warp as you hit them, and that's called the Kiko Warp, and you can fall right through them. Big, big time saver in that room. Indeed. Right, as Robo Lenifus just said, that was the Kiko <laughs> we referred to earlier. <laughs> yep. I am a robot. <laughs> do I really sound like a robot right yes, now? Yes, you do. Yeah, oh, no. I don't know if it's your processor might be pegging out. <laughs> it's kind of cool sounding there. Yeah, this is why it's that. faster to get supers. Exactly. You see how fast those supers, uh, supers shoot at him? Yeah. It is a well-known fact that you can use a power bomb at the start of the fight, so, but... It's so in this case, bag. I killed him right at the beginning of his animation, and he doesn't like to die until after he finishes his animation, but... I was able to interrupt that by jumping into his claw. Even though I knew he wasn't going to die from it, I jumped into his claw, and then when he picked me up and let me go at the top, I unmorphed, so he just grabbed me again right away. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah, so if you're fighting him and you're like, okay, I've hit him with 30 supers, why is he not dead? That is just Ridley's way of trolling you, basically. He will... He can start animations, basically, before he grabs you, and if you... If for whatever reason he doesn't grab you, he will continue to do animations until he does a set number of them, and then he will die. Yeah. So you want to try to get manipulate him so he grabs you. As he did there, that's kind of tricky to do in real time, but... 
As long as you keep track of your super missile hits, you no. Can actually, use. actually, the morph, uh, the spring ball. The yeah, the spring ball is not tricky. And then when he dragged me up into the air, all I did is unmorph as soon as he let go of me. There was no timing to that at all, really, to get him to grab me again. Well, I guess it's just kind of tricky if you're first starting out this game. You don't know what's going on. Like that right, might be kind right. of hard. As, to as do. soon as you're out of his claws, you just want to unmorph again, and hopefully he'll grab you again. But if you have hit hit him with thirty supers, the best thing to do is just sit in the middle of the platform and then maybe try to spring ball, ball. or jump up. I mean, like up. even if you're not spring balling, just sit there as a ball, and he will grab you and you know die. He is attracted to the ball. Right. Yes. Right. Uh, yeah, the reason why dropping a power bomb at the beginning of the Ridley fight is slower is because he's like invincible for five seconds after every power bomb or something like that. So your first set of super missiles that you'd normally hit him with, like all of them go through him, and it's just ridiculous. Even if you drop the power bomb like midair on the way down, it is absolutely ridiculous how long he stays invincible after a power bomb. Yeah. And never mind that he actually runs away from the blast too. <laughs> also, yeah. Well, yeah. Also, the power bomb only does like 200 damage to him, and the super does 600. Um, yeah. If you get both power bomb hits, I think it's more than 200. But I, could be I think wrong. it's like 200 per hit or something like yeah. that. I mean, it's it's like really low damage compared to what you could be doing. Yeah, I honestly think that it's only a feasible thing for low percent, which most people aren't going to be doing low percent. So, Really the fastest way on Ridley is to start out with a charge beam and then do the rest of your shots as super missiles, but that's a lot harder to do. Um, you got to know when he's going to activate, basically. Just to, so we don't skip over what just happened there, that little, it was like a mini morph ball maze, basically, that you get you go through to get those power bombs. Mm-hmm best thing to do is just hold it's once again there's crumble blocks there hold so jump and hold right hold, yeah hold right and jump as you're going down those little things and you'll and just then, keep and then shift. as you get to the last column and after after some play you'll figure out where the last column is but you just pop out and you shoot the door before you get to it while you're falling i mean it's right. it's a little tricky you don't have to do it i mean you save very little time but i mean it's it's still it's still time saved. If you take all these time savers that that we say not crucial, it does add up. Yeah. So, but but again, but, I mean, find find your fastest way for every room. That's yeah. The most important thing. Yeah, and honestly, the most important thing, especially if you're going to start racing this, is making sure that you know the route well enough that you're not going to forget anything. Even we sometimes forget items. <laughs> Very often. You mean like always yeah, more, forget items? more than often, I would say. <laughs> what I would do is, if you're going to run 100%, get like a sketch pad or something, write down, you know, the five or six most missable items and just check oh, them off when you get I, I I will make a link to this route, by the way. Um, putting it, put it in the highlight and on the YouTube video when I'm done. I will yeah. make a link to it, like on Pastebin or whatever. So you can you can see exactly the route that I'm using here. And it's exactly the same descriptions that I'm using for the items uh, in this video. So hopefully that'll um, that'll help you out if you don't know the route. And if you're a fan of using timers with splits, that would be another good idea to use. Have your splits be those forgettable or easily missable items to help you remember. That's a really good idea. Yeah, I like that. Second best way is not to use regular missiles on Ridley. No. <laughs> <laughs> I like that idea. Contrary to popular belief. Contrary to the donations from Garrus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. That could be a run killer. Cer certain tranquilites have been known to die in using that <laughs> method. Okay, so now pretty much all we have left is X the X-ray, right? X-ray and X retro. X-ray and then blue uh, North ah. or blue Brinstar, yeah. Retro Brinstar, as Lanifus says. Yeah. It's pretty much his name, man. The whole area is just retro. Retro, right. <laughs> retro chic. Convincibility? Is that what you're talking about, Tranquilite? You're convinced of your invincibility? Invincibility? <laughs> Alright. So you're moving through the junction one final time here to exactly. go to the red brinster shaft. And we're just gonna grab the x-ray 
and then go back up the stairs, clear that out, and then um, and then it's straight on to Turian. So. Indeed. X-ray isn't as vital as it sounds. <laughs> Yeah, this it's is not definitely like you have the... to use it to like view one of Mother Brain's forums or anything. <laughs> no, there's no scan dashing or anything like that needed. If you ever get into New Game Plus runs, it is it is helpful there. <laughs> um, and obviously, if you're wondering why we wait so long to get it, it's because you have Screw Attack, which makes it very easy to get through that long hallway that we just got through. Right. That's Balance why maker. you want to get this. Okay. Yeah, balance maker is okay to ask questions. Um, for sure, we're going to take questions during the credits. But um, yeah, ask questions at any time. If, uh, we'll get to it as soon as we can. I don't yeah, know if the other guys are streaming. But uh, I'm not. But if my stream for this, if I you're watching not. this after the fact on YouTube or on uh, Twitch, you know, if you want to post a comment as well, we'd be happy to answer it. Also, in the IRC, we have a Super Metroid channel mm. that we try to stay in. Okay, now I don't know how I actually got through that door on that fall. I've never seen that before. I just kind of usually you'll happened. land on the door, kind of, and be crouching. Us yeah, usually you'll land like on top of the door. I don't know how I just went straight through it. This game is magic. It is magic. <laughs> this is retro, Brinster. Yeah. So or I like retro. to drop the power bomb first, so that the you know the whole thing is clear while I'm getting yeah. the power bomb. Make sure you drop that power bomb far to the right, so you don't have to drop another power bomb. Uh, yeah, the f like as far away as I, I dropped it, that's the farthest to the left that you can drop it and still right. get all the blocks. So a good strat is just to hug the wall. That way, you know for sure it will be right there. Right. Yeah, it's, it's only like two blocks away again. from the wall anyway. So. And no game could be complete without an invisible platform, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> the shortest gap between item pickups. Yeah, don't forget that missile right there. It's, <laughs> it's very easy to forget. Uh, why didn't I get that PB while getting the missiles with high jump? Because I did not want to have to turn around afterwards and then end up still having to, um, you know, come back anyway. It's like I'd have to come back here anyway. I may as well just wait until it's more convenient. Because if, right, if I if I got those power bombs uh, when I got the pipe missiles, then I would you know basically be adding additional backtracking for no reason. Right, because there are still more items that we must get up this ladder here. Exactly, and you can clear out um, you can clear out retro Brinstar at that time. But then you have to worry about all the stuff above Retro Brinstar. This which area are, right which here. The, um, I believe it's just really three more items, but... Um, so that Shine Spark is... That was, a, you know, that was actually a quick charge, but... <laughs> it, was, it was just a normal quick charge. It wasn't a super short, it was just a normal quick charge. Once again, just run for half a or walk for half a second, and then hold run. Um... And that shine spark, I mean, you don't have to do it, but it's nice. If you can do it, do it. If not, don't worry about it. Yeah. So right here, you can just screw attack through those yellow things. Yes, you can also freeze those guys and run across them, which is, I guess, the intended way of doing it. But I find that way is much more... I wouldn't say yeah, optimal, yeah. but... It's, it's, it's fine if you have the plasma beam, because then you can just diagonal shoot while you're running through them. But there's still a right. chance that one of them will jump up like a pixel and snap yeah. your run. Right. It's the a pain. chance that you can still miss them, too, and that's even worse than... Yeah. Yeah, so that way is a lot safer. Mm -hmm. Recommended way. And then you just have to remember to turn your ice beam on before you go into Turian. Uh, which I find the best time for that is the statue room. So now we've got the last item, and we're ready to go beat the game. Yay. So uh, normally, uh, in my route, I'd have to go up to the gauntlet after that, but uh, and this works just as well. So. You're so close to the gauntlet, it wouldn't matter either way. Yeah. Wow. 
I never get that shot and get the door open so I can just run right through it. Yeah, I never uh, well, it requires the plasma beam for one, and I don't right. know if you... No, I mean, even in my 80% even, even then, I mean, you have to you have to do it just right. Uh, and it also requires you not having the ice beam on, which I think in any percent you would have the ice beam on at that point. Mm. Yes, good. And now it's our second coffee break. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you'll find you don't get a lot of breaks running this game. But this is one of them. This is one of them. Enjoy it. Actually, you, uh, you get you get a lot of breaks. It's just most of them are two to five seconds long. <laughs> you get the series escape, bowling, uh, my favorite critter, uh, statues, mother brain, and that's it basically. Yeah. Yeah. Mother brain is the biggest one, I think. Except in a hundred percent. And the critter you're, you're, you're going to see the stand-up glitch in action. Um, There's because no it's really not, not that hard to do. It's cool looking. It saves a lot of time. Do it. Krimi, that sounds about right. Uh, skipping the Metroid is ridiculously hard to do, in fact. I was just playing around with it just for the heck of it. Best I did, I got out of the room with the Metroid on my head... But it turns out it slows you down for the rest of the game, so yeah, it's not a good no. idea. You can really screw up some like parts of the physics, and you can even freeze the game if you don't do it just right, right so it's right. not recommended. So at this point, since I didn't go back to the ship to save, um, I do need to watch my super missile count. Um, I want to have at least 10, is really the thing. So I'm staying, I'm staying pretty close to 10. Yes, and so if you don't have enough super missiles coming through here use regular missiles to kill the, the metroids and hopefully you will get you know you'll net more super missiles basically exactly exactly um and if you can help it don't be missing health because they drop health in insane rates if you're missing anything yeah it's right re it's really stupid yeah if you have the curse of msds then you will have trouble getting as many super missiles that you, as you need, even in 100%. <laughs> so so here, what you want to do, why you want to have more than 10 supers, by the way, is uh, you want to crystal flash after the Metroid drains your health. But what I'm doing here is, if you get down to about 620 health, you can do a crystal flash in the Metroid. And uh, all that is, is you drop the power bomb right as the Metroid grabs you. And, and then hold your crystal flash sequence. That's really all there is to it. Sometimes you don't get it. That's all right. You know, just drop another power bomb, do a real crystal flash. Uh, in this case, I actually had a little more energy, so I was finding that if I did it slightly early, that I'd only gain one tank. Or uh, one time, I actually was fighting with the Metroid, so I was gaining health from the flash as it was draining. That was pretty funny. <laughs> Oh, but wow. You, but you really want to wait, like, last possible moment. Uh, drop a power bomb. I, I think plus plus or minus 5 energy from 620 is probably fine. And if that's just too confusing for you, don't even worry about it. Just wait until after he's done nomming on you and do a crystal flash then. Exactly. Because that'll save you two extra door transitions at the very minimum. And the time it takes to refill from the station. Well, I mean, you still have to wait for the crystal flash to finish. But... Oh, that's true. Uh... Doing it in the Metroid is obviously the fastest way, since you don't lose any time whatsoever. But and if you can't do it, then I mean, dropping a Crystal Flash afterwards, I think, is still faster. Uh, crystal Flash button combination is you hold both of your angle buttons down and your fire button, which is uh, used to drop the bomb. There's right. actually a time server here with Mother Brain. He took that damage intentionally to assist with the with what will be coming up very shortly. Right. So Mother Brain right here takes 20 charge shots. So here I'm counting my shots and just trying not to get hit uh, because I want to stay above 700 energy. Um, I mean, that's that's really the, the important thing. Stay above 700. So you can still take um, like one of those big beam attacks. Um, uh, also, you also quick. want to be below 800, or not 800, you want to be below 1,000 energy, so 999 to 700 is the safe range. 
take off your suits, let her hyperbeam you. Stand up, and then you can put your suits back on. Also, real quick, if you're wondering why he was he had to turn the screw attack back on to do the Zebatite glitch, you have to have your screw attack disabled. But ideally, you want to have it back on for the escape because it makes it a lot faster. So that's why he had it turned on and off. So the rest of this fight is just shooting charge beams. So let's try and describe the Zebatite glitch in a little more detail. So, again, the requirements are you have the screw attack off, you have the ice beam on. It's because the screw attack resets your invincibility. You're vulnerable again when it, when it's done animating. That's why you want it off. You need to be flashing from damage for the Zebatite glitch to work. Right. Also kills the thing, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, I believe it's so. It will kill the, the Rinka, the Cheerio. Uh, for me, when I do the Zebatite glitch, I play it a little safer than a lot of people. What I do is I freeze the thing and I actually spin jump into it twice. And then the next straight jump should automatically get through. You can get through there even without spin jumping into it, just taking damage from another thing. But You don't even have to spin jump into it. Um, the way I do it is uh, after I freeze it, I just do a spin jump kind of off to the side. You want to make sure you land in the corner is the only thing from the spin jump. So you take, you take a hit, you do a spin jump, and make sure to land in the corner, because you're actually standing on the Rinka at that point. And then um, do a normal jump through. Now in this case, I got 40 shots on her before the ending, so uh, she's already dead. So 40 shots is, is what it, it usually takes, but it's hard to get 40 shots, so... You know, now, be ready to hyperbeam her. Yeah, exactly. And if you're so, like, just overwhelmed by what just happened there, you know, it's not going to, you know, you save maybe 15 seconds doing what he just did there. Uh, you save a fair bit of time. Yeah. 15 30, seconds 40. is probably right. Yeah. It's like well, however, however long it takes to hyperbeam her down. 36 hyperbeam shots. Right. Well, you think with going in and out of the pause menu, those extra times, I think it button works out to about 20 seconds. Yeah, you're probably right. But yeah, so then you can just fight her the normal way, obviously, if you don't want to do all that. Just be careful if you do this stand-up glitch, because he can hurt your game. You may be tempted to continuously fire, but it's a lag machine if you do that, so... Right. Um, not a huge deal. Are you going to be rescuing the critters? That's a dumb yeah, question. Definitely not. Yes. <laughs> even though even though this would be a 50 minute run either way, no, do not save the critters. <laughs> if I put it in a tutorial, people would think, oh, that's the best way to do this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it does not add to your percentage. It does not uh, change anything in the game except for one pixel, I guess. And that's debatable, really. No, it isn't, but... Well, it definitely changes. Let's just say it's debatable. Yeah, it right. storyline for the future games. Uh, yes, the canon. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So if you don't save him, Metroid Fusion never happened, and we all win. <laughs> <laughs> the world is saved from a different Metroid game. There goes the planet. That's right. Samus That's right. destroys so, the So, um... We can go ahead and uh, take questions at this point. Does anyone in my chat have any questions about anything in the game? Maybe something we might have uh, skimmed over or don't even think about anymore? Which is very possible because there is a lot going on in, these, in this kind of game. Exactly. Balance Maker, we are so heartless because it's just we're going for time. That's all there is to it. I if I save the critters that. and Garrison doesn't save the critters and I lose because of that, well, you know, you can't count on the other guys having a heart too. <laughs> <laughs> I can guarantee you I'm not going to save the critters. Uh, Shadows Panther, the Dragon fight, you, you cannot do a regular short charge on the Dragon fight. The question is, does it require a quick short or a super short? Um, and what you can do is you can actually do a two-tap short charge, which is you tap run and then you hold run. 
You don't have to do the full three tap. You don't have to stutter. You don't have to do any of that. You can just do a two tap. I believe theoretically it is possible to do a quick charge, but it's pretty, like the timing is almost frame perfect to do a quick charge, so it's not recommended. Not many questions so far. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Hattori Hanzo, if you donate while I'm in the middle of any Super Metroid run, I will go ahead and save the animals as long as you tell me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care if I win a race. <laughs> Money is out. good. I'll pick myself out. The almighty dollar is a very persuasive. More than thing. a dollar. Oh. <laughs> dollar to be at dollar least one is good. good. <laughs> ten. Yeah, ten. Because I, I could lose a race because of that. Need to be compensated somehow. The best way to know when Ridley is going to grab you and die is you hit him with 30 super missiles. You have to be counting. Uh, there is a slight hue change when he's ready to die, but it's it's very hard to... If you're not um, looking for it, you will not notice it. Yeah, yeah I mean, just look at your super missile count when you go in. I'm, I'm looking missiles. for it. I'm looking for it, and I never get it. It's, it's, there's also a behavior change as well, which is a little bit harder to pick up, but if you see him changing directions quickly, like going towards you and then backing off in a quick fashion, that is an indication that he, he does have zero HP. But again, it's very, you know, it's, it's a nuance, so it's hard to notice if you don't play this game a lot. And even then, he could just go into another animation at whim, so you're better off counting the shots, so you can exactly. just be ready. Right. Surefire way to, to, right. to know that he's dead. Next question is the crystal flash not used in any percent. That is correct. There is not enough power bombs in any percent to do a crystal flash. There's also no place where you'd really need to do it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, the time it would take to get those extra two power bomb pickups would negate the amount of time a crystal flash would save and then some. Okay. Mm -hmm. Next question why grab the grapple beam early? Uh, spring ball glitch and Dragon. Ba yeah, basically what we're avoiding there is the spring ball glitch. Um, also, you can use it on Dragon, and that kind of leads into the next question. Uh, does the grapple beam hurt bosses? Yes, it hurts Dragon. It's the only boss it hurts. It hurts Dragon only if Dragon <laughs> has latched on to you. Yeah, right. only if Dragon is latched on to you and he's like trying to, you know, drag you up and rape you or whatever. Um, it's I'm sure most people know basically if Dragon picks you up and you grapple onto one of those broken electrode things, it'll instantly kill him as long as you have enough HP to survive it, which you should in 100%. Uh, yeah, I, w I wouldn't say instantly kill him, but yeah. It only yeah, takes yeah. 70 hit points of your damage before Dragon dies from it. I've but but Dragon it. actually hits you on the way up a few times. Yeah. Like, I've yeah. never seen him not hit you before you can grab him. Yeah, by the time he gets to that pattern where he's moving around that far, he's at least hit you once. Uh, why have you guys not made a split timer for this yet? Actually, Lenefus has. Mm -hmm. I have. <laughs> I have icon sets. <laughs> Not icon sex, not icon packs or anything else like that. It's <laughs> That's right, icon, icon sex. Icon. Yep. <laughs> I'm only missing Kraid, Dragon, and I don't or I don't remember what else I'm do, missing. Do you have Ridley? I think you said Crocomire I, last time. Oh yeah, and Crocomire. That's what I'm missing. Okay. Kraid, okay. Kraid, Croc, and Dragon. Do you have an icon for the end yet? Uh, I do not actually. No, Chris. The critters. question mark. I don't have crispy critters. <laughs> Should be a Metroid. <laughs> I have the big Metroid, yep. Nice. Alright. Just um, big Metroid with the tier. What is your favorite item in the game? This is for everyone. That's a good one. I don't know. That's a good Probably question. Speed I don't really think about it. Speed booster is a good choice. I like the speed booster. But, uh, Plasma I beam. I say it's my favorite. I don't know if I have a favorite. <laughs> I have favorite tricks, but not favorite items. Yeah. I'd probably have to go with Morph Ball, just because you can do the most cool tricks with it. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It would be Morph Ball. Um, also, I was going to say, 
uh, that I was trying to try to compile a list of individual tutorials we could do for individual tricks. Um, yes, the biggest that would two be on perfect. My, that the biggest perfect. two in my mind would be Ball maybe ball. the sports spawn supers and the spring ball without grapple. Mm-hmm. I think those two would be beneficial to have longer videos where you have more time to explain it, more time to demonstrate it. I, I, I still think the mock ball needs to be one of them. Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah that's, that as well. that's a good one, yeah. Yeah, because you can go over both kinds of mock balls. Yep. yep. Maybe even wreck ship entry because people do have a lot of problem with that. Yeah. The question is, what is the point of saving the critters? Well, you get to view of, like three more pixels in the ending. <laughs> Other than that, there is no point. The only reason you do it is to make Gunfy happy. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> if you're a humanitarian or an, I guess more of an animalitarian. <laughs> if if you're if you care about fictitious animals, sure. <laughs> hey, they don't save my favorite critter, so I don't care, man. If that goes in there, I'd be all about it. Okay, this is a really good question. The fan tune fight. What is the easiest way to get to two or three round kill? Or better yet, what's the best way to learn to aim the X factor better? So I'm going to start off with the three round kill. The easiest way to do a three round kill is you do the first round as charge wave uh, spacer twice, and then charge wave ice spacer, and then the second round is two ice wave charge a missile, and then. Uh, charge wave ice spacer. Third round is two charge wave spacer and then a super. That's a three round. Now the two round is a little harder. Uh, and I'm going to let let the other guys talk about how they aim their X factor. Well the X factor is actually incredibly difficult to time and each one of us has different points of when they time it and they're all inconsistent so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> <laughs> I, I stand in the center of the room where Fantoon appears and I try and time it so when he uh, he's just about to come back in I pause uh, I get more I, mean, I get waved by itself and if I time it right you get all four hits you get your X factor. I think Desi stands on the right side. Of the I room. stand on the left side, actually. On the left side. Left side, sorry. And, uh, as soon as he disappears off the screen, what I do is I kind of hum to myself uh, one measure of uh, the William Tell overture. Dun, 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 dun. And then uh, on that last note, I press start. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's how I try and aim it. I, I think the, the bottom line here is that there really isn't a consistent way of doing it that you're not going to come, I mean, unless you come up with your own way of doing it. I, my suggestion would be, and don't even go into the fight, but just practice that X-Factor combo. Try to use it, get a feel for how it moves and how it reacts, and then, you know, just just go in there and just try to do it the best you can, and you'll kind of just learn. It's a trial and error thing. You'll kind of learn how it re- behaves. Mm. In all that's honesty, one of those things, that's, yeah, go ahead. The timing isn't really something that you can explain because we all kind of have our own individual timing and what works for me may not be the same thing that you know someone else does. I think me, MSDS, and Cassius all use the same technique but we have different timing for it really. Yeah, yeah we, we all stand is- on the right side of the room and we all probably have different ways of timing it and you know there's even more nuances as far as what you do influences the way that he moves when he's in that pattern. So if you jump as he's going across you, he's more likely to come at the bottom of the screen. If you run towards him, he's more likely to come at you at a faster rate. So there's, it's really very tricky, very ticky-tack. And the worst thing is, is there's like maybe two-frame window that you can hit him with all four. <laughs> yeah. If you miss it, you're likely going to hit him with just one. Sometimes you may get two or three, but uh, most of the time you'll probably hit him with just one of the four beams. Which is which is all right. I mean, because you can still do a three round if you hit him with one of the beams. Yeah. All right. So let's see. First off, um, mock ball. No matter how you spell it, M A C H or M O C K, that's the same trick. Um. And and both both apply. I mean, I think the original name of the term was M A C H, and then someone heard it and then spelled it differently or something. Basically, it's a faster moving. Uh, morph ball. Um, now, the procedure for mock balling is you have to hold jump. That's one of the important things that a lot of people miss when they're trying it out at first. You have to be holding jump. Um, 
you do your run, you jump up in the air, uh, either you cap off your jump by let it go jump, and then hit it again, or you just hold it the whole time, but you have to be holding jump. You press down, and then right as you're landing, you morph and then press forward as soon as possible. And what a lot of people will do is, if similar to if you're familiar with any kind of Capcom fighting game, is do the Hadouken motion when you're doing that final input of morphing and then sliding up to forward. A lot of people prefer to do that Hadouken motion because it just makes it a smoother transition. Relatively, you have a lot of time between the final morph and then pressing right. You have a pretty good amount of time before, you know, space in between those two inputs. So a lot of people find it's better to just do a Hadouken, basically, once you're on the way to hitting the ground. Exactly. Yep. And you'll be able to tell pretty quickly if you got it, because if you morph too soon, you're going to bounce. And bouncing is bad. Okay, the next next question is, is there some trick to blue suiting after Dragon? Uh, And I find I have a lot of trouble blue suiting after Dragon as well. Uh, What helps is if you can get her to about 20%, but I mean, it's 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 really hard to know when she's at twenty percent. It's going to be like almost as soon as she turns red in the stomach. Right, and if you do it when she doesn't have, when she has a very little amount of health, I I want to say the reason that you don't get blue suit if she has very little health is because of the position you're at when she dies. If you're not far enough into her hitbox, maybe I could be completely wrong about that, but that's kind of something I've noticed. Shadows Panther, and in that sequence that you've got for the three round, you're missing the super missile at the end. That's all it is. Um, yeah, and honestly, the three round Fantoon is more complicated than the two round, if that makes sense. Like, the two round is, you know... It's more complicated, it's, but it is easier. It's definitely easier, but it's, you know, there's just a lot more input you have to do. The, the two round is hitting the X Factor, and then on the next round, it's just two shard shots and a super missile. So it's easier to remember, easier to pull off, but obviously the X-Factor is very hard to time, so it makes it more difficult. Yeah, yeah. the three-round is very uh, tight as far as your inputs go. Like, yeah, like helps missile me. in the second round is is tough to time sometimes. Yeah, that's my hardest problem, is getting that regular missile in before pausing and getting the full beam combo going before hitting him a third time before he disappears. That's the hardest part of the three-round. What you could do is you could hit him with the first charge, switch to a missile while he's on screen, hit him with the second charge when he's off screen, and then switch to your full beams and get him while he's off screen again. That way you can make sure that you get it. I don't think it's faster by any means, but it does guarantee you a three round. Now, uh, Mock Ball, while you have Speed Echoes, is just called a Speed Ball, and that's also the name for if you just happen to roll into a ball while you're speeding and bounce. And it's just, you're in a ball while you're blue and you have the echoes. That's a speed ball. Right. The, the, the input is exactly the same. It's a little bit faster, obviously, because you are moving faster. So, but It may, it may throw your timing off some, but it's exactly the same move. Yes. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> now, Linnaeus, for the last phase of Arthas, what you want to do is you want to have your ranged DPS shoot up all the little guys up in the air and then... You have your melee focus on him. And, okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know we were playing Warcraft 3. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. All right, but uh, uh, no, I'm just, just messing with you. Uh, that that seems pretty good. I want to thank all you guys, even though Garrison um, just DC'd again. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, you, your, your input has, uh, has definitely made this tutorial a lot better, and I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry, glad I, I waited... Wrong. I'm sorry I was a robot. That's all right. I'm, I'm, I'm glad I waited for everyone to be on on this because you guys are my, my 100% buddies now. So, <laughs> well, I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Uh, anybody, let's go ahead and pimp out SRO real quick. Uh, anybody who wants to race with us or with anybody else interested in Super Metro or really any other game, um, the, the website is speedrunslive.com. Uh, runslive.com and um, it's a lot of fun. It's a very popular game on on their page. It's, number, it's right. actually number two. Num- number two, that's right. Right behind yes. Mario 64 because uh, that game is insurmountable. 
<laughs> Definitely. And if you have questions too, please feel free to come in the channel and, you know, you can ask us the questions. There's also, like I said, there's a Super Metroid channel in there. I don't think I'm actually in there right now, but <laughs> we are happy to help with questions. Uh, I'm sure you'll be able to find someone for whatever game that you're wanting to run. So, but... Um all skill levels are welcome. We're not going to make fun of you if you suck. Or anything like that. You hear that, Ron Scout? <laughs> oh, here's a good one. Let's go ahead and uh, horizontal shine spark. Let's go ahead and uh, oh, cover goodness. that before we uh, I would like to know as well. Close it out. <laughs> so, so horizontal shine spark from the ground is simple. You do your charge and then you do jump left. I mean, think of it as the opposite of a wall jump. You know how a wall jump what you do is you go up against the wall and then you do direction jump. With basically the exact same timing, you just reverse the order of those inputs. Jump left. And you can hold jump. Yeah, you, you can hold jump. I mean, like, oh, jump. as long as you're holding jump, while, you know, she does that little kind of prep thing before she goes up. As long as you're holding jump and press, you know, the direction you want to go, that's the direction you'll go. The same thing for, um... Uh, doing it in the air. Um, now, personally, the way I do it in the air is I press up to break out of my spin, and then I roll it to forward and then hold jump. So it's kind of like doing an upside-down fireball from Street if Fighter. I, if I could just interrupt and back up for a second. To do it in the air, you have to spin jump to get to the height that you wanted to, to execute it. That's if you, right. Oh. So that means you have to be basically moving before you jump. A regular that jump will spark. not let you shine spark. Right, because if you just hit jump, you're going to be doing a shine spark from the ground. You can, Garrison? Yeah, if you angle down while you're standing up, you can actually do a straight jump in mid-air shine spark as soon as you let go of angle down. Oh, that's oh. very good to know. Hmm. Well, that makes it even more complicated. So, yeah, and and there are other ways to get yourself ready to shine spark from a spin jump. You could do, you could press up, you can press R, you can press L. It doesn't matter. So either the angle buttons or up. All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and close this out. Um, once again, I appreciate you guys being here. And I appreciate everyone watching this, both now and in the future. Let's keep on racing and keep on running.